Hey, this is Jess from uh, T-Rex. Uh, we're here today with uh, somebody very special, one of the guys that um, I've been uh, admiring since I was a kid, and um, he was one of the first people over here that actually took the time to meet me and talk with me, so it's a very, uh, it's a special thing today. So I want to introduce Tim Pierce. Hello. And Tim is, um, you know, Tim, you've been you know, one of the you you are one of the busiest people I know, and you for the past more than thirty years you have been doing, you know, just session after session doing uh, the biggest recordings and uh, and yeah. So how did you how did you get started in the uh, in the recording business? When I moved here in 1980, um, the music business was quite large, mm. as you might imagine, and uh, new wave was actually big, and the Knack were a big band. Anybody remembers the Knack? And there was a lot of work here, um, and I actually was able to get a really strong foothold. It, it would be more difficult now that the, the industry has shrunk and the people are doing everything in private on their computers. Um, it was very open, and, and there were rehearsals everywhere and um, gigs everywhere and lots of people doing records, lots of artists trying to get it together and, and get record deals, and there was a lot of money to develop music. So it was an easy time in that sense. I mean, when I got here, I was very, very astounded by the competition and by how many really good musicians there were all around on every instrument. Um, but there was a lot going on, and I was able to meet one guy who actually got me my first gig, and out of that gig, I met another guy and another guy. And what happens is, you know, what happened back then is, you would meet one person, you'd do some good work, and then you'd meet a couple of other people they'd recommend you for a couple other things. So I met maybe a handful of musicians, five or six musicians, and those five or six musicians actually started to get me gigs. And then they would introduce me to other musicians. So it happened very quickly in a way because you meet five people, and then each one of those five people introduces you to five more people, and all yeah. of a sudden you have 25 musician friends. And then all of a sudden... You have, you know, so it's, it grows like a tree, as long as you can do good work, you know. Um, these days it's harder, because everything's kind of done in private and uh, away from any particular central location. So it was easy, easier back then. And uh, so I got a foothold very quickly. And then a couple of years after that, I, I think it took about two years, I was able to do a John Waite record, which was... Uh, good and then I, I did a, a a little bit of overdubbing on Rick Springfield's album and Rick Springfield was just had just become a big star with this big single he had and I was able to join his band so that carried me for the next four years so through the 80s you know I was able to do a lot partly because of Rick Springfield because he was so um, busy doing concerts and I did five records with him and uh, yeah. it carried me through the through most of the 80s I think he's still busy today too. Uh, yes, yeah, he's doing uh, great. Uh, yeah, playing. So yeah, so um, so you've done mostly uh, li um, studio recordings for most of your time. Are you the the live um, shows or touring? You did that. Yeah, that I even when I I did those big tours, I realized that that really wasn't where my love was. I always wanted to be in the laboratory, so to speak. Yeah. When I grew up, I loved Steely Dan and Earth, Wind, and Fire, and and you know before that. My influences were ZZ Top and Jimi Hendrix and you know Eric Clapton and a lot of the British bands, Wishbone Ash, um, a lot of the, the great guitar players of the late 60s and early 70s. And then in the 70s, I got into the Mahavishnu Orchestra and Steely Dan and and then even the power rock bands that that uh, you know I loved. I loved them all. And I was just a fiend for you know reading the credits and seeing who was in the studio. So even when I toured, I realized that really wasn't what I loved. I loved recording. I loved yeah. being in the laboratory, basically. So when I finished with Rick, I planted my feet and uh, tried to get that going. So what are you looking for in your sound? Um, you know because. 
you know, you, you always want to deliver the best which you do. And what are you looking for, um, in particular, to your guitar sound? What do people expect from you? These days, it's really simple. I try and be modern because I've been doing it long enough to know that that's where my survival is, really. And for instance, when I work, um, I turn my delays off almost 100% of the time because most records these days are done with dry guitar tones. I don't use a lot of effects. Um, when I do use delays, I try and hide them so they just make the sound float a little bit, but you never actually hear a, a delay trail. Mm. Um, a lot of what I try and do here on the West Coast is to sound less polished and more like a teenager, more like a kid, because that's that's the kind of guitar that you hear on records these days, and that's really, really vital, uh, especially as you become more of a veteran, is to really do everything you can to still sound like a kid. And that's something that's a little easier for me than some musicians, and I know that's one of the reasons I work as much as I do, is I'm able to sound less polished, and um, that's just vital. So. It's, it's kind of the reverse of what you would think. You would think you want to get your sound more refined and more smooth, but really what you want to do is hold on to those rough edges, and that's, you know, that's just being modern. Now, it's important to have all those other skills and being able to pull them out. There are records that I do that are released in, you know, in the Latin markets that still have that smooth kind of you know, polished sound. And I just finished a week with Rascal Flats, and they their sound is more polished and smooth. So it's it's I'm really glad I still have those skills. Yeah. But what's really vital in 2010 is is sounding modern, and that means sounding like a kid. Yeah. You know? So that's Great. what I try for.